doing a great job in the House and in many areas for being with me today. The issue we're talking about today is, I think, an issue that deals with the great economic crisis in America today. And that is, despite low unemployment, uh, we end up having tens of millions of Americans working at wages that are just so low uh, that they can't adequately take care of their families. And today we have three people in America, the three wealthiest people, who own more wealth than the bottom 50 percent, and we have the absurd situation that 52 percent of all new income is going to the top 1 percent. And I think it is fair to say that the American people are tired of having to subsidize the wealthiest people in this country who are paying wages that are just so low that people can't get by. And let me just give you a few examples of what we are talking about. Uh, Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, is the wealthiest person on earth. Uh, I think, as I understand it, his wealth went up by $2 billion yesterday. Amazon had a good day. Uh, and he's worth about $168 billion. Not bad. Since the beginning of this year, his wealth has increased by about $260 million every single day. Meanwhile, Mr. Bezos continues to pay thousands of his Amazon employees wages that are so low that they must rely on food stamps, Medicaid, or subsidized housing in order to survive, programs that are financed by the middle class of this country. According to a recent report from New Food Economy, one out of three Amazon workers in Arizona and 2,400 in Pennsylvania and Ohio need food stamps in order to feed their families. Further, according to a November 2016 study by the Institute for Local Self-Reliance, warehouse workers at Amazon are paid 9 percent less than the industry average for comparable work nationally. 18% less than average in Seattle, 19% less than average in Atlanta, and 22% less than average in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Last week, I asked Amazon workers to share their experiences with my office about wages and working conditions at Amazon. Many hundreds of them responded. And I want to very briefly share with you a very few of the responses. A former Amazon worker from Tennessee said, and I quote, I worked at Amazon for five months at $11 an hour as a full-time employee. I was on SNAP, that's the food stamp program, and had to live with my parents and my three children because I could not afford to find a safe location for my family. A current Amazon employee in Illinois said, and I quote, I work 40 hours a week at $13.25 an hour. I have two kids to support. I receive $90 of food stamps. I don't make enough to eat lunch to eat lunch at work, so I split a protein shake between two meals to make sure my children eat." End of quote. Another Amazon worker said, quote, when I started working for Amazon, my family was receiving welfare, such as food stamps and Medicaid. I'm still receiving those benefits because I make so little money, even though I work 40 hours a week. Former Amazon worker from North Carolina said, quote, been on food stamps the entire time I've been working in Amazon, back-breaking labor, terrible pay, and even worse working conditions. In April, Amazon reported that half of its workforce makes less than $28,500 a year, about $13.60 an hour. Now, even that figure is misleading because it doesn't include an estimated 40 percent of Amazon's workforce who are employed through temporary staffing firms. As we speak, Integrity Staffing Solutions, Amazon's major temp agency, is posting a job, as we speak right now, on its website at Amazon's warehouse in Columbia, South Carolina, for, quote, up to $11.25 an hour. On this very same website, you can find job postings at Amazon for up to $12.25 in Phoenix, up to $12 an hour in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and up to $13 and a quarter an hour in Middletown, Delaware. In other words, the wealthiest person in the world is advertising jobs that pay workers wages that are so low 
that they have to go on food stamps, Medicaid, or subsidized housing. And that's wrong, and that has got to change, and that's why uh, Representative Connor and I are here today. But let me be very clear that this discussion is not just about Amazon and Jeff Bezos. The Walton family of Walmart is the wealthiest family in the country with a net worth of nearly $175 billion. One family owns more wealth than the bottom 40% of the American people. Meanwhile, just like Amazon, Walmart pays its workers wages that are so inadequate that many of them are forced to depend on public assistance in order to survive. In fact, that number is over $6 billion a year that taxpayers are spending to subsidize the wealthiest family in this country. The fast food industry is another major recipient of corporate welfare. Turns out that about 52% of the workers in the fast food industry are on public assistance. The fact is that if employers in this country simply paid workers a living wage, taxpayers would save about $150 billion a year on federal assistance programs, and millions of workers would live in dignity and security. So that is why uh, Congressman Connor and I are proposing legislation that would have Mr. Bezos, the Walton family of Walmart, and other billionaires get off of welfare and start paying their workers a living wage. Specifically, this bill would establish a 100% tax on corporations with 500 or more employees equal to the amount of federal benefits received by their low-wage workers. In other words, the taxpayers of this country would no longer be subsidizing the wealthiest people in this country who are paying their workers inadequate wages. So we think that at a time when the very rich are getting much richer and millions of people are working at very low wages, this is the right step forward. Uh, and with that, let me introduce Representative Rokana of California. Ro? Thank you, Senator Sanders. Thank you for your vision and moral clarity in raising these issues and introducing this legislation. I will be brief because Senator Sanders has touched on uh, most of the key aspects. Let me just say very simply what is the core idea behind this bill. There is this sense in America that if you work hard, and if you happen to pick a company that does well, you should do well. And that's the basic American promise. And you have a situation where people are working hard and they're reading the headlines that the company they're working for has a trillion dollar market share or multi-billion dollar market share. And they're wondering, why can't they have the basic wage to support their families? Now. I mean, if you bag groceries, you should be able to buy groceries. If you serve a meal at a restaurant, every now and then you should be able to buy a meal. If you put together the packages that land on the doorsteps of my wife and I, you should be able to go online and shop for those packages. This is not a radical idea. You know how I know it's not a radical idea? Because in 1914, Henry Ford doubled doubled wages from $2.50 to $5 an hour. $5 an hour back then would be the equivalent of $120 an hour today. And guess what happened? Half the country wanted Henry Ford to run for president. It became that popular and it led to wages increasing. So for all those you know, billionaires who now think they can be president, uh, a little bit of free advice why don't you just double wages? We'll do more good than most of the consultants you've hired. But the basic point here is taxpayers shouldn't be subsidizing multi-trillion dollar corporations with their wages. We shouldn't, as taxpayers, be paying for the nutrition, for the basic health, for the housing of people who are working for companies that can clearly afford it. And those companies are making a choice. They're making a choice. They're saying, we're going to give this money, these profits, for stock options and executive pay, but we're not going to reward the people who are actually doing a lot of the work. And I don't think there's anyone, anyone who believes in the free market, who, who really thinks that these 
stock options and executives who are getting all of these profits while workers who are actually doing the work are not getting a fair deal, that that makes economic sense. This bill will incentivize companies to pay the wage that workers deserve. Those workers will be able to buy things. That's what's going to grow our economy. That's what always has. Thank you. <coughs> Any questions? Yes, did you have a question, sir? Oh, well, oh you're just stretching, Gwen. Okay. All right, maybe, did you have a question? No, okay. Yes, sir. I'm not a David Vandenberg with tax bills, but I'm wondering, um, are, are there ways to, to design the bill to um, guard against companies re reducing their levels of employment or harming workers in some other way as a response to this? Well, I think you, you're touching on a, 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 a problem which is a serious problem right now. Uh, as you know, a growing number of workers uh, at Walmart, for example, are, in my view, intentionally hired as part-time employees so that Walmart can avoid uh, paying the benefits which those workers deserve. So you're touching on a very significant uh, problem right now. But I do think you know, we can shape legislation that would minimize that problem. Sir? Is it hypocritical? There is, no. there is an intense policy in parts of Northern Vermont. What, why have you not done more in the last two decades to raise? Uh, well, thank you very much for that question. And as I'm sure you know, uh, with my very strong support, the legislature uh, in the state of Vermont, in fact, voted to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. And as somebody who has introduced the $15 an hour minimum wage bill here in the Senate, which now has, I believe, 30 co-sponsors. I was delighted to see that. Unfortunately, our Republican governor vetoed that legislation. Um, all right. Yes, sir. Um, in light of your legislation, Amazon called just, uh, yesterday purpose is $1 trillion market cap mark. What's your sense on that situation right now? Well, uh, that they reached the trillion dollar market cap. My, my my, my sense is that you have a corporation uh, that is exploding financially. They are doing phenomenally well. As I mentioned earlier, my understanding is Jeff Bezos's wealth went up by $2 billion yesterday. Uh, it's gone up about $260 million every single day since the beginning of this year. So you have a company that is doing phenomenally well. And I think the point that Congressman uh, Connor and I are making is that Bezos could play a profound role, not only in Amazon, but as one of the largest corporations in America. If he said today that nobody who is employed at Amazon will receive less than a living wage, this would not only improve lives for thousands of people at Amazon, it would send the message to every corporation in America that that's where we should be going as a nation. And let me just say, uh, on, a, on a very positive note, some of you may know a few months ago, I was down in, uh, in uh, Disneyland in uh, Anaheim, California. And the unions there were standing up to Disney at a time when workers uh, at Disneyland and Disney World in Orlando, Florida were making 10, 11 bucks an hour. And the workers fought back. We went down there. We had a great rally in Anaheim. And they recently signed a contract uh, with Disney that is, I understand every worker who works at Disneyland or Disney World will now receive 15 bucks an hour. That means 30, 40 percent wage increase for a number of workers. That's where we should be going as a country, not a nation where so few have so much and so many are struggling. So Bezos, as the head of one of the major corporations in America, can play a very profound role 
in improving the lives, not just the people at Amazon, but every worker in this country by saying, you know what, I've got a lot of money, my company is doing phenomenally well, we're going to make sure that every worker at Amazon earns a living wage. Okay, uh, we're all good? That's good. Okay, thank you all very much.